Good evening, friends and family. This is your boy, Tony, and this is the 120th episode of Tone's Takes. Yes, everyone give me a round of applause. And oh, wait, am I getting bags under my eyes? I need to take a break from this for a while, but not today. Today, I wanted to talk about this show, Superior Donuts. Does anyone watch this? It comes on CBS. I don't. I really don't watch TV that much anymore because I'm so busy trying to make these videos. They just put out a trailer for their episode tonight, which tackles immigration. I just wanted to play uh, the quick clip from it. Let's hear what they have to say. Why are the Feds raiding the donut shop. What if Arthur finds out? He's pretty sharp. Get in here, my finger stuck in the flash button. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, well that sounds like it's going to be a great episode. If you haven't heard, Superior Donuts is a comedy, and I'm just reading basically from the synopsis that CBS gave me. It's a comedy about an owner, I'm guessing is this guy, because I'm sure that guy's not owning a donut shop for obvious reasons. <laughs> Superior Donuts is a comedy about an owner of a small donut shop that's located in a quickly gentrifying Chicago neighborhood. Wow, if you don't know what gentrifying means, it's one of those places where they stuffed all the black people when we started all coming up here during the great migration and then white people and elites were like hey this place is actually pretty close to the downtown area and if we lived here we could raise the prices and put all of our fancy shops here and really make some money we can rub elbows with each other again closer to the city man that's what gentrification is <laughs> um, so he's in a quickly gentrifying neighborhood arthur is a gruff to the point he looks gruff doesn't he does that look like a man that's gruff and to the point, huh? Nah, he looks too soft. That, that guy looks way too soft. He's not gruff at all. All right, autofocus back on me. Anyway, so yeah, Arthur is a gruff to the point Chicagoan who refuses to sell newfangled chronics and macchiatos or renovate his dated shop that hasn't changed since 1969. That all changes when enterprising go-getter Franco, who I'm guessing is the black guy, fast talks his way into Arthur's life as his new and only employee. Yup, that's the black guy for sure. And that he can bring the shop and Arthur into the 21st century. Oh, that's such a great promise, Arthur. Arthur support his regulars. Uh, include loyal patron Randy and all these other people, basically. And then it also talks about how um, uh, his business is already challenged. Arthur faced another, comp uh, another uh, competitor when Sophia, an ambitious young entrepreneur, parks her organic food truck in front of the donut shop, and becomes, which becomes a hit with his customers. So, wow, Arthur just has everything not going for him. And so this is the, the scene of, or the, the, the setting, the exposition, you may say, for this show, and I, it's already in its second season with CBS, and it's looking to maybe be renewed for a third season. But on tonight's episode, they focused on the big I word, immigration. Do you see that, those huddled masses? Do you see that? This was the scene at um, the border, like over the past couple of days, um, where that migrant caravan, which I talked about, I broke the news earlier this month about this migrant caravan coming from Central America when there were thousands of immigrants that were coming, um, hoping to get through Mexico and through the United States. And a lot of you responded and you were like, oh my gosh, where are my guns? I'm gonna shoot every immigrant that I see trying to cross my border. Well, look, here they are. There they are. Not that I'm trying to incite any 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 violence, but they're coming and they're here. They are here. And um, if you haven't heard the news, you know there's a lot that uh, immigration is trying to stop them. Apparently, the the head, the top person at ICE just stepped down. There's a lot of stuff going on, but. Anyway, this is what this show is tackling. It's it's focused on Diane Guerrero, and basically, you know, she stars in this show, and she's she's proud of the show for trying to talk about this. And it's interesting because she dealt with this personally herself. Guerrero spent uh, much of her time uh, off screen highlighting through advocacy and interviews and even a memoir um, the story about her family being deported to Colombia when she was a teenager, and then her brother um, also having to go back. So. So she's actually lived this firsthand. And so on the TV show, um, which this episode is called The Iceman Cometh, Guerrero's character, Sophia, becomes worried when U.S. immigration and customs enforcement officials begin conducting raids in the uh, gentrified neighborhood. Um, and her brother, Rafael, who I'm guessing is, is this guy right there, is, uh, is, is undocumented and, and working. So the writer sought Guerrero's input on the finer points of the episode. Um, 
But of course, it's not completely based off of her life. And it's interesting because, again, this is CBS. This is a, a TV station where they get about, you know, five to six million views for this. And so it's it's slowly, you know, seeping into the hearts and minds of people through, um, you know, stations like this, which allow things like this to be aired. Um, there's also the, the Netflix show One Day at a Time, um, which also is tackling immigration. And then I believe uh, a few episodes ago, Grey's Anatomy even tackled it, where they had um, one of their... Um, stars on there who was a, a nurse studying to be a doctor um, and she was part of DACA, Deferred um, Action for Childhood Arrivals, and she was also um, in danger of being deported to El Salvador. So it's it's pretty interesting to see, you know, a lot of the TV shows and a lot of our, our series really starting to tackle this. And I just wanted to know, are you guys for this? I mean, we, us we usually like to watch shows because they're funny and they help take our minds off of things. But do you like it when things like this are just shoved down your throat? You will know about immigration and you will know about DACA and the dreamers and what they have to go through. Do you like that? Maybe, maybe not. It's something that we all have to deal with, obviously, because they're, these are people that are coming into our country and we have to learn to live with them because we are the land of the free and the home of the brave. And I heard this stupid comment on Fox this morning when I was driving into work where the guy was like, these people climbing over the wall, they don't look like huddled masses. We shouldn't like, is that really, is that really up for debate what they look like if they're cold and shivering on a boat? Versus if they're able to climb over a wall or if they have attorneys. Look, they want to come and live in the United States because the place where they're coming from is horrible. It's terrible. And that's the same reason why the Irish and the Dutch and the English and anybody who came here in the past, that's why they came here. Because the place where they were from was terrible. And like I said in the past episode that I did, we made a lot of the places where these people are coming from in Central America terrible. With all of our little interventions and everything that we tried to do and previous doctrines that we had, look, we caused this, now we gotta deal with it. So to me, for me, I'm glad that um, Diane Guerrero is, is pushing this. I'm glad that the producers of this show are pushing this. And I hope that you all sit there and watch it and understand that, look, it's happening. And we all have to deal with it. And we all need to embrace it and embrace each other and stop trying to fight and hurt each other. All right? So that's all I've got for you all today. Again, let me know your thoughts. That's all I've got to talk about. Say goodbye to Diane and say goodbye to me. Until tomorrow, peace out.